Welcome. First, I'd like to thank Claire and Borrell for the music. Welcome to our Ascension Day service of worship. This is a holy day for Christians around the world. It commemorates the Christian belief of the bodily ascension of Jesus into heaven. It is one of the ecumenical and universally celebrated feasts of the Christian churches, ranking up there with Christmas and Epiphany and Easter and Pentecost. Ascension Day is traditionally celebrated on the Thursday, and it's the 40th day of Easter. And we get this day in the accounts of the Gospels of Mark and Luke and the Book of Acts. In the United States, Christians celebrate Ascension Thursday. But in other countries and other parts of the world, Ascension Thursday begins a four-day weekend of celebration similar to our Thanksgiving weekend. Jack and I have lived overseas and we witnessed this celebration and this holy day on both sides of the pond. Join us now as we celebrate Ascension Day. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant we pray, Almighty God, that as we believe your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who have ascended into heaven, so may we also in heart and mind there ascend, and with him continually dwell, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Prayers of the People Adapted from Ascension Episcopal Church Uniting ourselves to God's love for the church and the world, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Jesus, help us love others as you love us. We pray for the world, for justice that brings peace, for our stewardship of creation, for the unity of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Jesus, help us love others as you love us. We pray for our nation, for a government and a people, who care for the least of these, for the hungry, for the homeless, and for those in prison. For our president, our legislators, and our courts, let us pray to the Lord. Jesus, help us love others as you love us. We pray for the church, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for John, our bishop, for our diocese, its clergy and people, that it may be filled with truth and love and be an instrument of grace in the world, let us pray to the Lord. Jesus, Jesus help, help us love others, others as, as you love us. We pray for our community. May our eyes be open to truly see you in our neighbors and our ears open to hear the cries of the poor. Let us pray to the Lord. Jesus, Jesus help, help us love others as you love us. We pray for those who are sick, those who suffer, and those in any kind of trouble. We pray for their families and friends and for those who care for them. We pray for those who have died that they may rest in peace and rise in glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Jesus, help us love others as you love us. God of love, you lived and died as one of us so that we might have life and have it in abundance. Be with all persons and all those who will come to know your love more fully. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to do your will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. The Gospel of Luke. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, 
and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped, worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. As I begin this response to the gospel, I want to thank my colleagues who helped me put this response together. As we worship on this Ascension Day, I am sure that this theme did not dominate your breakfast conversation this morning. And I don't believe that it was an overriding theme, even as we talk around church. And I'm sure that you haven't spent a whole lot of time and energy exploring Ascension Thursday. And I'm sure maybe homiletically you haven't heard a lot about this. I am talking about the ascension of Jesus into heaven. If by chance it rings a bell, it is probably from our creedal words, which are, and on the third day he rose according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of the Father. But before you turn Facebook off today, if you were thinking that this theme has nothing to offer you to enrich your soul, please listen on. Let me say that Ascension does make a contribution. It does say something, and it says something to our hearts and something that will bring us into a closer relationship with God. You may be thinking, because I've already thought it, that when Luke describes Jesus being carried up into heaven, often we focus on the how rather than the meaning of what this might mean. And finding the mechanics of the event incredulous, we just dismiss the whole matter. Merely a product of exuberance, end of story. Physics over theology. The ascension is not the province of physics. It is the province, however, of theology. And it speaks to a sense of the permanence that we seek. We seek it in how we worship and how we share. It announces, if you will, that we have friends in high places. That friend is our rock, our redeemer. The Jesus who was, is now, and will ever be. In the book of Hebrews, it reminds us, as it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What Jesus did, he did forever. His pattern of life, his substance of his teachings, his role of bringing us closer to God. All of this is permanent and will never change. We desperately hunger for what is forever. And that hunger is so commonplace that sometimes it just goes unrecognized. What we hunger for is this permanence in God's eternity. Sam Miller once wrote an essay titled, Beginning Eternity Now. He writes, there is a sense in which we begin eternity here and now. It is not something that we will easily add on to the end of our life when we die. Eternity is mixed invisibly with the stuff of the earth. With every new coming of springtime across the earth, some will continue to live the old, old life as they continue to live while others will see an amazing stuff that we call the soul that shines with potential surprises. 
able to begin again no matter how far it has gone, stretching itself towards peace, which is only known in the endless dimensions of God's eternal purpose. End of quote. Luke tells us the disciples returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple blessing God. To us, to gather regularly for public worship, to sing our praises to God, makes perfect sense, because if we fail to worship God here, we will worship at some other altar. If we do that, it is guaranteed that eventually we will give in to the most profound of disappointments. We are, by our very nature, worshiping people, and there is no end to the golden calves which we are willing to idolize. Said differently, we will regularly make our way to one temple or another. Of this, you can be certain. You and I know about those golden calves, which tend to seduce us. Money, cars, houses, bank accounts, you name it. There's always a top 10 list on the idols. So we are to beware Gather regularly. Be Christ's ambassadors. This keeps us centered on God's love and Jesus' sacrifice and leads us to eternal life. Amen. Let us now pray the words that Jesus has taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen.